it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We've got a 550 Porsche Spider uh, wire form buck and uh, we've been having students make steel panels for this and we've made the steel panels before and we would use those to make a flexible shape pattern. So we've got a nice flexible shape pattern. We've uh, corrected errors in the buck and there's probably more stations we could put in but I think we got enough and we decided the best way to make this is to make it in two sections, the left and the right. So this is the left section. This is a, a flexible shape pattern turned inside out. And you can see where it's laid on onto the wires now. This is a, a salient feature right here. It is a, a really strong reverse curve and that makes this pot really complicated to do. Also, um, if you're making it like this, you have to do a lot of shrinking to bring this metal down. And then it transitions very quickly into a flat plane here, which is the, the ring that the uh, headlight attaches to. So it's proven to be a real tough piece. And I've had a couple students attempt to do it. We're doing it out of 050 aluminum, and we turn it inside out. And this was made off of uh, one of the panels. It wasn't perfect, but we've been making a couple versions of it, uh, trying different things. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try to use uh, the power hammer instead of using uh, the manual mallet method that I usually use. And we'll just see what happens with the power hammer. And also, this reverse curve uh, typically this is done by stretching this edge and if you just stretch that edge it gets really thin here so we're going to try to do a little shrink in board right here and that'll help that out so you don't have to stretch that edge so much so we've got a blank and it's greatly oversized but let's uh, take a few minutes and we're not going to make the panel complete what we're going to do is just rough it in and then see how long it would take to rough this panel in using these methods I just described. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the, uh, the reverse curve tool that I just did a video on and I'll show you uh, why I'm not going to use that right now. Well, let's go over there Mark and check out that tool. So here's the reverse curve tool we made out of a, uh, a sewer pipe or a water pipe, whatever it is and uh, it's a nice elbow. It makes the reverse curve really easy to do and the problem I don't want to use this is I haven't had a chance to really grind it and I really want to put uh, some extensions on here and I don't have time to do it right at the moment. I wanted to kill these edges and we're going to put some locking mechanisms down here so that when you fold the metal over it and if, uh, that'll hold it in place. If you haven't watched that video check it out. That's uh, extreme shrinking I think of the reverse curve. We just did it uh, like last week. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to do that reverse curve first and then we're going to go over to the power hammer and do the shrinking that we need to do. And um, this is a beta bag I made many years ago and the, the salient features of this beta bag is it has uh, a, a nice short edge, straight edge here a longer straight edge here, a nice round, and then it has an inside curve right here. And I like to uh, do reverse curves in there. It's nice for stretching the edge out on a reverse curve. But what we're going to do is we have from the flexible shape pattern, we have where the headlight location is. That's what that series of dots are. We punch those holes out and then we transfer that information to the panel. And then this series of dots that have been punched out are, that's the, the valley of the reverse curve. Now, you've probably heard me say that uh, do not hit the valley of the reverse curve. Now I'm going to break that commandment right now because we're shrinking, not stretching. So first we have to trap it. So the way to trap that is you got you have to bend it like this right where that reverse curve is right where that valley is. So I got a bent over like this now. And it doesn't matter in the process of doing what you need to do what the panel looks like. So uh, 
We're going to take one of my mallets and what we want to do is get a, um, uh, a gathering or uh, uh, a collision of the uh, surface here and it, it'll, it'll tell us we're on the right road once we see a little ridge forming here and once that ridge is formed then you know that you're hitting uh, the area and you know that you're going to be shrinking. So as long as we keep it in this 90 degree configuration against the bag, we're not going to be marking anything up. And we're going to trap this like this. And this gets to look really nasty and ugly. You don't have to be concerned about what it looks like at this point in the game. We're going to bring it over, way over. It's not really cooperating right now. If you don't get that hot spine, you're going to be stretching instead of shrinking. So, let's um, start this reverse curve off by stretching this edge a little bit because we're going to have to stretch the edge anyways. So it's right here. And I'll show, show you on the flat bench what I'm talking about here by looking at the flexible shape pattern. The flexible shape pattern, on this side here, where it's reversed, it doesn't show you that much. But let's go put it the way it was originally made. And it's, it's a little more visual this way. Because you can see that's a representation of the reverse curve right there. That's when the edge of the reverse of the pattern, flexible shape pattern, is, is off the edge. You'll see that everything else here, the edge is touching everywhere on the flexible shape pattern except for there. And whenever you make a flexible shape pattern and you see that like that, that's an, an indicator that you have a reverse curve. The further up that goes is the more severe the reverse curve. So let's see when we put this on here. Got to turn it inside out. We indicate this on here and it's not really showing it much now because this has got to be brought up a bit. Maybe I might have to do the shrinking first before I can really capture that. That might be a good idea. Let's do that. Let's try doing the shrinking that we need to do here with the power hammer and see how that goes. So you can see we have to bring this way up because we've got a lot of gap here. So we're going to fill that up by shrinking this edge. There's way too much material here. So we use the power hammer and shrink that up. First I gotta move this. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at where we're at. That's filling up. We've only got a little bit right there. We'll still shrink some more there. And this rolls around. We 
bring that around like that. All right, so that looks looking pretty good. Now we got to deal with this reverse curve. I think we can uh, do the desired shrink right there right now. We've got uh, I probably over sh uh, sh shrunk it a little bit. And that leaves you a little room to clean up all the shrink marks. Uh, you bring the English wheel, or you can use the power hammer to planish that all out. And now we're going to try. We'll go back to that bag and try to do a captured uh, shrink right here. Now I think it'll be a little more favorable to uh, capture that. And let's see what happens. Yeah, so we're getting that nice spine, nice resistance. Whenever you see that spine, that is shrinking. Now if you go too far, shrinking becomes stretching. So. Now I got to recapture that. That means just bending it in a different spot or rebending it tighter there and it'll reactivate it. Another thing we can do is start the process of stretching this edge up. Let's do that. So this would be elastic stretching of the edge. I use the mallet for that. And, and the trick is hitting it right on the edge like that. Now there's a lot of extra material there that will have to be trimmed off. And when I hit it, it actually changes the arrangement too. It's just bending it down. But if you, every time you whack it really hard like that right on the edge, you're actually stretching the metal too. So I, I use this uh, sacrificial layer of leather. Uh, especially if I'm going to be hitting into the bag because you got a sharp edge uh, attempting to, to rip your bag. So that way there, the sacrificial layer protects the bag. Now you see how that's moving in there like that. Now I can capture that. And I got a little bit of shrink out of that. 
Now I'll hit it this way. This is the way it really wants to go. And see that's reactivating that spot where I can capture it over here as a shrink. I gotta keep it locked up. See, that's what I want is to, to to go in like that. That's the reverse curve, but you got to you got to capture it, whatever way you can bend it. No, that way it's not working. Let's try. Let's try stretching that edge again and see if that will form something we can use. Now we get a nice spine right there. As long as you get that spine, you are shrinking. All right, now spine disappears. Boop, you gotta stop. You got a spine right here I can capture. Pull that up. And you can't be concerned about what the metal looks like because this is all going to planish out very easily. The object there is to get a correct area value, which means we can put the flexible shape pattern on it and it'll tell us how we're doing. Now you can see it's getting pretty good. There's a lot of extra material here. Oh, we got a little bit more shrinking to do. See this extra material right here? This needs to be trimmed. We'll bring, bring a, a shear in here and trim most of that off so we can stretch over there too. So let's try a little more shrinking and then we'll do the trim. This is stretching on the edge over here. rule structure you have to remember is um, if you're making a standard compound curve a shrink on the edge or a stretch in board from that edge does the exact same thing it creates the volume of shape that you want now if you reverse that and you're making a reverse curve the rule structure is reversed on its head now we don't shrink on the edge and stretch in the center now we stretch on the edge and shrink in the center. Just the complete opposite. So we got a nice spine right here. Sometimes the shopper hammer head can capture that. And what happens if we make a mistake? If we stretch instead of shrinking, it's not a problem. Like I say, metal is clay. You can go back in there, capture it, and re-shrink it again. If you watched my video where I made that big golf ball size uh, raised compound curve, and then I shrunk it right down and brought the thickness right back to where it was. So um, experience will teach you how hard to hit these. You hit those spines, you're shrinking. If you go further, then you'll start to stretch. So that's probably all I can do right now at that level. Now I'm going to put this on, locate it properly, and we're going to trim off a lot of this excess here. This is actually bigger than it needs to be to begin with. Uh, but we're still going to leave like a one inch margin here and we're going to try to stretch over it over in here to see if I can get that reverse to form a little better. So let's mark it and then we'll cut it and we'll be back in a minute. 
All right, we've got it all trimmed, and uh, this is where we need the extra material on the edge or shrink some more in the, in the middle over here. So I'm going to stretch this edge right in here, and the object is to get this to sit flat just like that. So get the hammer. I'm going to stretch that right into that section right in there. And we're going to see now we get we maybe get a capture opportunity here right there. That's good. We'll stretch it some more. And let's see what we have now. All right, so now we've only got a little bit right there. It's not bad. This can get all planished out. We can maybe uh, shrink this a little more, stretch that a little bit more. Uh, and then we'll plan our shit and we might have to do another round, but now you see We've roughed out that panel, and I think it's only been 25 30 minutes at the most The rest of the panel This has just got a roll here like this So we just bend this over This is this 050 aluminum which you still can bend pretty good the 060 uh, that is really resistant to bending, but this 050 bends nicely. And now this will need a little crown here, so it'll have to be area added in here. And then where it goes around right here, this needs to roll under, and there'll have to be some shrinking right in that spot where it makes the 90 degree turn. So after you do that, um, your panel is really showing like a 550 Porsche spider panel. This will be all planished out in a matter of 10-15 uh, minutes or so. And like I said, you might have to do a little bit more shrinking, a little more stretching, some stretching in here, uh, and a little shrinking there. And then the panel will be to like 85-90% of development. And then to get it to full development, it's another hour or so to really planish it all out and fine fit it to the buck but we're really close i hope you learned a lot uh, keep watching the videos uh, check out our t-shirts on on our videos at the bottom from teespring we've got about nine t-shirts up there now and visit my website proshaper.com you'll find a lot of nice tools there and a lot of other good information so this is ray Shaleen from pro shaper workshop thanks for watching